Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. In this three-part tutorial video, I'm going to show you how I airbrushed this sea turtle using the GSI Creos PS.770 as well as a fine paintbrush. So let's go get into the tutorial part one right now. Okay, so the first step is I've just uh, made up some paper templates. So what I've done is I've printed uh, the reference image out to scale on some A4 copy paper. So just plain A4 copy paper. Um, I'm working on a 250 by 250 mil canvas. So this size works out perfectly. And what I'm doing is I'm cutting out key parts of the artwork. So some of the darker values, as you can see here, I'm doing a bit of a water template just to get those sharper edges when creating the uh, reflection within the water. So we'll get to that as the uh, artwork progresses. But you'll notice I've cut out like the eyes. So usually the, all the main features within an artwork, that's what I'll cut out of the paper template. And then what that allows me to do is basically use that template to map in my artwork, which is what I'm gonna show you throughout this part of the video. And then I'm gonna airbrush obviously on top of that and create the artwork as it goes on through the three parts of this uh, particular tutorial series. So the first color I'm going to use just to map in uh, some of the sea is a light aqua. And to mix up this aqua I've used a bit of white mixed with blue. So I do that first and uh, get like a light blue and then I add a couple of drops of yellow which then in turn turns it like an aqua, uh, very pastel aqua color which is what I'm looking for. So what I'm doing here is I'm just lining up the positive mask of the turtle. And what this will do is it'll keep that area uh, white, so the canvas white, and then I'm going to work on my turtle on top of that so all the colours will be able to be visible. And I'm coming in with a light blue, so white mixed with blue. Uh, again, this is all Trident airbrush paint, and I am mixing the paint with a reducer. so. Even if it's not listed, I'm still using a reducer and just mix it up to your liking. So if you're just starting out, generally one to one mix is good for most people. I tend to mix about 30% paint, 70% reducer. I like it a lot uh, thinner, especially when doing detail work. Um, for general airbrushing, like you see here, I'm probably using it at just over a one to one mix. So I just grabbed a freehand template. This is a texture template by Airshot Stencils. And I'm just going to lay in a bit of texturing as a basis for my coral. So I am using a reference for this, but again, I'm not really a photorealistic painter as such. I use a reference as a guide and then I basically uh, work off that, but I make a lot of it up as I go. So you'll notice here I'm using the template that I made earlier. This is the one that I just cut out of paper and I'm just laying some of those darker um, reflections in from the water. And I'm going to further refine this later on in the artwork. I'm just sort of getting all my key pieces into place, in a sense putting in my foundations and then I build on top of my artwork from there on in. So again, bit of uh, template use as well as freehand, so I do mix it up. And I'm also dusting back over it now just to knock it back so it's not as harsh and blend it back into the existing blue colour. Now I'm using a light green, white mixed with green. And I'm just roughly mapping in where I want that coral to sit. So if this is the first time watching one of my videos, then welcome. For all our regular viewers, welcome back. I do hope that you're enjoying this tutorial series so far. And uh, by all means, feel free to hit subscribe, tap on that bell icon that will notify you every time I put out new content. I generally do weekly videos. And if you feel that this could help someone else, by all means, feel free to share it out. And uh, let's build this airbrush community together. So you'll notice here that I'm switching in between some freehand airbrushing as well as using that freehand shield just to get some of that texturing in there 
uh, a little bit quicker and also it is harsher when you're using a shield so you can utilize that to your benefit. I'm now switching back to my light aqua and uh, going to do some freehand airbrushing on top to really establish another layer on that coral. And if you're wondering, the airbrush that I am using in this tutorial series is a GSI Creos PS.770. Um, I'd like to do a shout out to Spray Gunner for kindly sending me one to have a go at. And this is the first artwork that I have completed using this particular brush. It runs a 0.18mm needle nozzle setup and I find it's ex excellent for achieving fine detail as well as broad spray as you'll see throughout this video. Um, it's also very very smooth on the trigger and extremely comfortable to use so a great all-round brush. And if you are interested in getting some more information about this particular airbrush or you would like to go ahead and purchase one I'll go ahead and pop some links in the description below so that you can go check out this airbrush and any other items that I showcase within this video tutorial series. Okay, so I've got dark green in the airbrush now. Uh, this is mixed with a few drops of black and transparent base. So just to tint it a little bit and make it a little bit darker. So I'm going to go ahead and do some of the defining edges of the coral just to create a sense of depth and further detail the coral using this particular color. Okay, so I want to get a bit more contrast now and go a little bit darker. So I'm adding a few more drops of black to my original mix and just put your finger over the front, pull back on the trigger and that will mix it in the cup for you and you can keep airbrushing. I'm going to use this color to further define the coral as you can see here. So up nice and close to get those sharp defined edges and then further back for some of the softer uh, shading. So for the second layer, the layer that I want further in the distance, I'm not going to go as sharp. 
whereas the one at the front is going to obviously be a sharper piece of coral so that we start to get that three dimension straight off the bat. So I've got a fairly good basis now for my coral, but I just want to make it pop that little bit more. So I'm now switching to a transparent black. So this is black mixed with transparent base. So what I do with any of these sort of transparent colors is I firstly mix up my transparent base with my reducer. So let's just say you prefer your paint at a one-to-one -one mix. I would do one part transparent base to one part reducer. And then I would add drops of black to that mix until I was happy with the intensity of it. And you can control how dark that's going to go. Okay, so I've got it fairly dark here. I want it almost black, but I still want it to be a little bit more transparent than a traditional opaque black because I don't want to eliminate all of my underlying detail and texturing. Okay, so now that I've finished with my black on the coral, I am actually switching to an art brush and I'm using an aqua white. So white mixed with the aqua that I mixed up earlier. And this is still Trident Airbrush paint. It brushes extremely well, so no reducer in this, just straight mixed out of the uh, bottle. And off I go with the brush, adding textures and sharper highlights to those uh, bits of coral. So what this is going to do is essentially it's similar to when you're working on a say synthetic paper and you'll notice that the artist uh, to create the highlights is removing bits of the paint. So essentially with the canvas that's very difficult to do. You can do it if the canvas is smooth but then that kind of defeats the whole purpose of working on a canvas. I really do love the texture within the canvas and the look of the artwork when it's airbrushed on top of that texture. So I didn't want to have a smooth canvas in order to be able to scratch back or erase. So instead I use a brush and I can create those really bright white defined highlights. And obviously a brush is going to go sharper than an airbrush. Even if you've got amazing skill, you'll never get it as sharp as the brush would apply the paint so you're going to get that instant contrast and then you can go back and airbrush back into that as well so that it doesn't look like it's totally just sitting on top it's all becoming part of the same artwork and that I will show you as this process goes on
So now that all my brushing is somewhat completed, at, well, at least for this stage, I'm going back to the aqua and I'm just going to come in with some airbrush highlights on the back section of that coral first. So doing these freehand, like I said earlier, will allow them to be not as sharp and it's going to give us that sense of depth straight away. And then I'll come in and render over the top of the coral of the front section that I just brushed just to blend that in a little bit more so that it doesn't look as uh, separated from the airbrushing that, we, that I did earlier. So you'll notice here, this is where I am merging it back into the existing airbrushing. So just hitting the edges of where the uh, paintbrush effect stopped, and that just brings it in nicely. Okay, so now I'm going to get the dark green and going to add in just a bit more texture and shading. So this is the first dark green that I used, which only had a hint of the, uh, the black in there. And I'm just varying my strokes from being up nice and close to also coming back a bit further from the surface and sort of blending the, uh, the shading into the more detailed sections. You can see I'm doing a bit of stippling there, just adding some of the coral, those pores in the coral. Okay, so now I'm switching to a blue. So this is the Trident True Blue and just over reduce this. So you can also um, achieve that sort of transparent look by over reducing it and just applying less coats. And I'm just tinting the back coral so that again that further pushes that into the background and highlights the first layer of coral. While I've got the blue, I'm just going to do some uh, darker shading, a few of those sort of weedy areas within the sea floor. And just a bit of uneven texture just to give it a sense of depth. So you notice I used that true blue on some of the coral as well, just to tint that a little bit. And um, I'm also holding the positive mask and just spraying around so to darken off the, uh, the sea color.
Okay, so back to my aqua mix, but this time I've added a bit more white to it and I'm going to add more highlights into the coral areas. A lot of stippling and texturing using the brush and just on that top edge to simulate the fact that that is where the light source is coming from. Again, just uh, using my reference to keep checking, but not following it 100%. Kind of just making this up a little bit as I go along. Okay, so now it's time to work on the actual turtle. Pretty happy with the uh, background there and the coral. So I'm gonna unmask the positive mask. And you can see I've got a nice clean white area. And now I'm using my other paper templates. I'm lining them up. So just lift them up and you'll see where the edge meets the other one. And then with a bit of masking tape, taping it in to temporarily hold it. And I'm starting off with a light yellow, so white mixed with yellow just to get that pastel colour. And I'm just spraying in some of those areas of the turtle shell. And just lifting bits and pieces in order to get that yellow where I want it. And also adding it in somewhat freehand as well. Being careful to keep track of where I'm putting the yellow so that I'm not spraying that colour over any other areas that may be a different colour and then they could tint. But you can see it doesn't look like much at the moment but it will start to come together as this tutorial progresses. Okay, so now I'm going to add some khaki green. So I mix this up with light aqua, dark green, sand, and add a few drops of sepia brown to that, and you should have a nice khaki green. If you're unsure with any color mixes, best thing to do, jump on Google, type it in, and do a search. Alternatively, if you have a color wheel, you can also use that to assist you. So a bit of freehand airbrushing to further add in that khaki green where it needs to be. You can see it's sort of looking like a bit of stencil art at the moment. Not really looking like a turtle yet, but uh, it will get there. Remember, these are all just the fundamental sections. And um, because I hadn't sketched on the canvas, I'm using all these areas and using my reference as a guide just to really create my artwork and know where I've got to put everything.
Okay, so now that I'm finished with the car key, the next color I want to add is some transparent blue. This is blue mixed with cerulean blue and transparent base. So I used a bit of the cerulean blue from the uh, Createx illustration colors range. It's probably the only color from Createx that I used in this whole artwork, uh, but everything else is trident. So just uh, mapping in the eye and some of those other areas around the turtle's head. Okay, so a bit of an unveil now of where we're at for part one. So you can see we've got the all the underlying features in there. So we're going to further render this turtle in part two. I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye for now.